and you'll see that now I am logged in. Hey folks, so today I'm going to walk you through how to set up a workstation uh, using Proxmox and No Machine. Uh, one of the reasons why you might want to set up a workstation, there's actually a variety of reasons, but I'll kind of tell you my reason. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, by trade. Most, most of the, the work I do on a day-to-day -day basis um, is software development type work, although I do a lot of meetings because uh, I do lead a team. So uh, actually my my day-to-day -day, uh, machine is a uh, Mac. I use a MacBook Pro, but when I want to do hardcore development, I actually remote into um, a virtual machine that I have set up with Arch Linux, and that's kind of where I do all my development. It's just kind of a little easier for me to have a laptop that kind of is plug and play with, uh, with, with no real kind of crazy stuff for work and uh, be able to relatively easily set up um, or relatively easily remote into kind of a more hardcore robust machine to do my development. So I'm going to walk you guys through how to do this install right now. Um, let's take a look. Um, so what I did right before the video here is it is actually on a previous take of the video <laughs> where I, I couldn't find the download page, but I downloaded uh, the GNOME. I think it's GNOME. Is it GNOME? GNOME? I, maybe somebody can correct me or let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, GNOME. Uh, I downloaded the GNOME flavor of Manjaro, uh, and that's what I'm just going to set up here just to kind of show you guys how this works. Uh, I just downloaded it uh, to a directory, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to upload it to, to your Proxmox instance uh, and then get everything kind of set up. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to find your local PVE here which is you know, basically the volume that your uh, Proxmox install set up on. Uh, hopefully I have enough memory on this. Let's see. Uh, it should be good, 33 gigs, okay, cool. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna then uh, click upload. Uh, you're gonna wanna you know, download the Manjaro or whatever distro you wanna check out or whatever you wanna install. Um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and upload this guy. Select file, you guys can't see this part, so apologize. Manjaro GNOME. So we're gonna go there. It's gonna start uploading. Uh, it should take a few seconds to upload. So um, maybe I'll kind of walk you guys through the steps of what we're gonna do uh, while it's just doing its upload. So really the first step um, is to get the install of the OS um, and kind of whatever kind of goodies you wanna get put in there, you get those put in as well. Second step uh, is uh, to set up something called No Machine. Uh, I know what No Machine is. is it's it's kind of like a v, it's a VNC um, concept. It's an X server. Um, and what it actually will let you do is it'll let you connect to the machine, and, and the machine will basically render a video and then send that back to you. Uh, and we're going to use just we're going to use the process to do the rendering. We're not going to do anything crazy like a, a GPU pass through. Although I did do that on my day to day daily drivers. So. I'll probably do a video uh, at some point on how that works, but this can kind of walk you through it. So I think the install is done now. Uh, so we're back in the browser here and you'll see the Manjaro here, just like that. You see my Arch ISO, but uh, so we're gonna use, we're gonna click create VM up here on the top right. Um, I'm just gonna call this uh, workstation temp because the great thing about VMs is you can just create stuff and destroy it and not really worry. Um, so we're going to give this guy, uh, so the ISO that we're going to load on this uh, is that Manjaro image. Uh, we're going to go ahead and you know, leave all of this stuff default. I'm going to do the vert2 or vert IO uh, with the SCSI. This size, I'm just going to do 32 gigs. Uh, that's usually what I do my boot drive as anyway. Uh, sometimes I'll make bigger ones. Uh, I'm actually going to put this on a larger disk though. Let's see. Uh, local VM ha LVM has it, so we'll just do that. Uh, number of CPUs, I'm going to give it 16, because I think that always feels good. And then I'm going to give it 16 gigs as well. 16. 16 gigabytes. Network, going to leave it default. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Uh, this is a summary of what's going on. Uh, going to click Finish. And you'll see that VM 101 is being created right now. By the way, cool little tip. You can do all of this stuff via command line and it's actually really cool. Uh, I actually prefer to do it that way, but I'm walking you guys through how to set it this way just to kind of do it. Um, cool, now we're just gonna start it. Pretty straightforward, right? Just click the start button. Um, we'll click on console here. This is gonna give us a, a BNC session, which you guys will see. And it's gonna boot. I'm just gonna tell it to boot automatically. Just hit enter right there. 
that's going to take a little while to boot. Uh, and I think maybe while this is booting, I can talk to you guys about the wonders of virtualization uh, since I'm such a passionate advocate. Um, one of the big reasons why um, is because I think virtualization just gives you the ability to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave this out, leave the browser up so you guys can kind of see that it's still happening. But um, virtualization really gives you like the, the flexibility to kind of keep hardware separate from what you're trying to do in software. So if you need to move, once you've set this workstation up, if you want to move to new hardware, you don't have to do a reinstall. You just grab the VM, you pick it up, you move it to the new hardware, and you run it. Like, it's that amazing, right? There's nothing better than that. Uh, and then you kind of just, like, leave, they let the hardware be more of a commodity and something that you know will kind of go away over time as opposed to having to do reinstalls and all this kind of pain in the ass that you typically deal with. So anyway, that's my soapbox. So... Um, Let's do, I've never actually installed Manjaro before, so if I do what this is saying, so I'm going to just breeze through this. Let's see. American English. Ooh, knows I'm in LA. Don't tell my mama. You guys know where I live. Uh, erase disk. Yeah, we're just going to pick this full 32 gigs, and I think that's kind of all I have to do. Yeah. Um... You probably want to look at an install video on a specific OS to kind of understand what's happening here. I'm just kind of walking you guys through this. My name is Jimmy. Uh, name of the computer is test. Let's see, call it workstation sample. I'm just going to keep it consistent. I believe that uses the host name for password. I'm just doing a generic one, two, three, four, five, six. Because that's what we need. Login automatically. You know, I'll do that. It's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a workstation. It's got a GUI. Let's just have it log itself in. Um, choose password for admin, ad, admin account. I'm just going to use the same password. Let's see. What name do you want to use to log in? Is that my username? Yeah, okay. So I'll just use my actual username. This is like basically everywhere. Oh, cool. Let's install. Uh, no, let's not do Office Suite. You might want to do this if you need it. But, you know, I usually do my Office stuff on my Mac because it's just a little easier. I think LibreOffice is amazing, but you know, let's be, let's be realistic. Microsoft office is phenomenal. And when somebody from marketing send me a spreadsheet to look at, to do something, I don't, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, try to get it to work and look the way it needs to look. Uh, so let's just do that. Do the install and boom, install should actually be relatively fast. Uh, Cause we're coming from, you know, ISO into we're coming from disk to disk basically here. <laughs> Um, although it usually is pretty fast these days, even like a USB drive, it, it's pretty fast. Um, so maybe I'll kind of use this opportunity to kind of talk and expound more, or I guess expand more on the thinking around VMs. Um, if you walk into any like major data center in the world, uh, there's a ton of virtualization happening, uh, kind of for the reason I was talking about before, which is, you know, you want to set up the system so that you can just install new hardware and then kind of overlay software on top of it without having to like have that too intertwined if at all possible now there's certain types of appliances that you're definitely going to want to set up uh on dedicated hardware i mean i think a router is a good example of this like if you have a router or a switch or something it doesn't really make a ton of sense to virtualize that i mean you may but maybe there's aspects of a router you know maybe you have a sub router or something that you virtualize but um i think generally you're, you're going to want to just you know keep things um uh, like a router or i mean i actually had an argument with somebody the other day about um, a NAS, a NAS service. And I actually said, you know, I would want to virtualize my NAS. Um, and, you know, he was saying, well, I want to make sure that my NAS is on a dedicated PSU um, in case the power, you know, in case the PSU goes out, I'm able to still get, you know, uh, you know, still have backups and all those kind of things. I think that's a good argument. But uh, even, even in that scenario, I would say you should still have your hardware and then you should be running a hypervisor, something like Proxmox, and then free NAS or something uh, over the top of that because you know, it just makes more sense to do that. Reason why is let's just say you want to migrate to a new machine. All you have to do is take your new machine, put it on the cluster, and you can literally just shut down your VM and you can move the VM from your old machine to your new machine, right? Put the hard drives in, turn it on, and you're good to go. Like there's no extended kind of, you know, install process, it's, it's really that easy. And that's the reason why virtualization is so awesome. And actually, on my, you'll see here, I have I actually have a Kubernetes cluster. This is Rancher, but I actually running Kubernetes on 
multiple machines because I yeah because I actually run VM machines and then on top of that I run a Docker uh, infrastructure so that I can add applications to Docker uh, and the applications I'm running on Docker are you know anything from you know report jobs that I have for work that I need to run to you know uh, you know, Plex I run on on uh, on, a, on one of those instances I have a crypto trader that I run on um, on my Kubernetes cluster so just kind of having that separation is amazing i can just i can i can shut those machines off or, or kill one of the machines the system will automatically migrate things over it's just it's just phenomenal so a really really big fan of virtualization and you know what i'm going to do a video on i'll probably do a pros and cons video uh for virtualization at some point uh in the future but um maybe i think maybe this would be the last little bit of virtualization uh you know soapboxing i'll do on this call uh, or on the, say on this video so uh, okay, cool. So we're done. We got the installs finished. Let's go ahead and restart it. I think it all worked. I guess we'll find out. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, as I mentioned before, the next step uh, is really to install uh, No Machine. Uh, what No Machine is going to do is going to it's going to let us remote in, and then I'll kind of show you guys how the how the uh, that action ends up happening as well, because it's pretty sweet uh, when you first figure it out. Um, one kind of side note is if you do this for gaming, I actually use something called Parsec. Um, I just find the performance to be a little better on Parsec uh, for, for gaming type stuff. Okay, cool. So here we are. Let's see. This is Manjaro. What I'm going to do, I'm also just going to go in and I'm just going to drop this um, CD-ROM drive here. Let's see. I'm just going to remove it. We don't really need to install a disk anymore. So next time the machine starts, this red line right here means that like next time the machine starts, it'll, it'll just remove that. So... Let's see. Okay, we're back. Now, this machine's working. I'm gonna turn this off. So this is a you know virtual machine. You know, um, you know we you could use this you know uh, VNC to to do your work. You know, you can go to uh, open up a Firefox browser and go to you know Google and kind of do a bunch of work here. Uh, I don't, I find the performance isn't phenomenal in this uh, exact, uh, in this um, this console that they have set up in, in, uh, by default in Proxbox. So as I mentioned before, what I like to do is I like to install, um, let's see, I think it's uh, Pac-Man. I think this supports Pac-Man, I believe. I guess we'll find out. Um, I believe it's uh, no machine Ben. Let's find out. Oh, we had a studio. Studio. That's kind of cool. They have like a cool little terminal there. Oh, uh, password. Okay, four, five, six. Uh, it's going to do an update. So it's going to take a little while. Let's see. Let's make sure that that's correct. I think it's in the AUR. No, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to install Yay. I like Yay a lot better, but let's look at um, Arch Linux. Um, no machine. I think usually. Oh, sweet, they got on the wiki. The freaking Arch wiki, I feel like. You know, I actually, I'm a big fan of the Arch. Uh, it's just no machine. I should be a big fan of the Arch Wiki, but it's, you know, sometimes, um, <laughs> oddly enough, what? Oh, do I need to, I always forget, I forget with Pac-Man, is it? Mm, let's see. Pac-Man, no machine. It's just no machine. They changed the name. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see here. People are probably bitching about something, but oops, oh, I forgot I have my keys set up. Sorry about that. This is really weird. I think I need to do. I always forget with this. Is it why? Install from AUR. Let me look at the 
Um, what were the docs on how to do this? Because I was, I think there's, I think there's, a, there's a special flag for it that I always forget. Either that or. Okay, let's, let's just install, install yay. Is that okay then? Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Actually, big fan of yay. I think yay's the bomb. Is it just, is it just, uh, Maybe it's just uh, install yay. Let's see. Okay, no machine. Yay. Okay. Yeah. Yay's great, by the way. You guys may not even see that. It may become a small, so I apologize for that. We're just going to take all the defaults here and let this guy install. Listen to me talk. Okay, cool. And then it's going to, okay, so install's done. I'm going to go just go ahead and reboot. All right, so as that's rebooting, I'm going to check here. It's going to take a second for it to come up, but... Let's watch it. I love that Proxmox uh, thing there. I just kind of, I don't know, something about virtualization at home that just makes me just love it so much. I, I just feel so pro when I'm doing it. Uh, maybe it's because I'm running three different things and three different types of environments. Uh, Windows I have here. This is my workstation. Uh, that, sorry, that's a server. This is my workstation. This is my NAS, which is shut down right now just because I've, I've been screwing around with some stuff. Um, yeah, so I believe no machine should be installed. So let's see what happens here. If I go to, uh, actually, let me, I gotta put some put border to desktop to uh, my desktop. Kind of give you guys a view here of the of the whole kit and caboodle. So here's no machine on the desktop. It's the desktop view, so you guys can see it. You'll see no machine here. Um, and you can see the workstation. So connect up to this guy and accept. Username is me, ps4. The password is that. And you'll see that now I am logged in. And as I mentioned before, you don't really need this anymore. Uh, in fact, we could close that, but I'm just going to keep it open. Oops, sick of argument, but this is it. So I'm in here. You can, uh, you know, I can do kind of all of the normal work that I would normally do uh, from this environment. Um, you, can, you can, if you kind of go up to the top right, you'll see this little peel thing when you install the machine on your, on your, I guess on your machine, on your Mac. This is, this is a Mac. So we're looking at my Mac on the outside here. And then on this little window on the inside, we'll minimize some of this stuff. So it's not confusing. So my Mac is here and no machine is here. So, uh, so this is literally like the workstation and I can do, you know, all my wonderful work uh, from here. You can go full screen. I'm not doing full screen now, but you know, if you want to do, I think you can actually modify the resolutions and everything. So I can say like full screen fits a window, which I'll, I'll just leave it on that. Um, you can change the resolution. Uh, sometimes one thing I do re uh, uh, recommend is that you request a 60 frames per spec per second. And then you disable the network the depth of quality. Um, it just gives you a little better quality on the stream itself. Uh, I, you know, it just gives you a little better. Um, uh, there's some aliasing stuff and stuff that I've come I've come across before, but yeah, some of my workstation here, so I can do. You know, if I need to do, to join, you know, if I need to, uh, you know, do a Google Docs, uh, you know, something like that. I can. I think I screwed up the Google. There it is. You know, Google Docs would be inside the machine. You know, if I want to install yay vim, I can install NeoVim here. Oops, let's see which one is it. The NeoVim package. I think it's is it Neo? I think it's actually NeoVim. Yeah. 
And this is kind of what my typical workstation environment's like. So I actually have them and a bunch of other crap go, you know, those kind of things installed on this on this uh, workstation machine here. And I'll show you guys just kind of how that works. I'm gonna maximize this. I wouldn't normally work on it this small. Like I normally I normally use my full screen. So let's see if I can get through this for some. Uh, I wasn't doing it before. Let's see. So we're gonna make sure we we're gonna resize it. Oh, is it because uh, resize what screen it is? Yeah, so that, that lets you kind of make it. Well, maybe I had it done. Had it done. I might have to save it. There's a way of doing this. I think this is it. Huh? Do I have to reconnect? I might have to reconnect. You can do full screen, which you guys can't see. That's interesting. I guess the screen's messed up. Let's not do full screen. Let's do. Um, Full screen off screen, no resize remote screen. Yeah, that's what we want. Uh, you can specify custom resolutions and stuff. Actually, maybe just because my that may be the max resolution I have set up in in the actual instance, which is you can you can tweak too. But anyway, so uh, so there's you know my Vim is sure yeah. So there's Neo Vim. You know we got set up here, so I can do my kind of development work. Um, you know, there, uh, you can do, yeah, if you need to install other kind of stuff or do any kind of other workstation work, you can do it there as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. I mean, that's generally kind of, uh, the crux of it all. Um, and that kind of gives you guys a good, just general overview, I think of how this whole thing can work. Um, I'll go ahead and like, leave you guys here, uh, you know, leave some notes in the comments and let me know if you want me to kind of do a deeper dive on. You know, actually, you know what? I, I think I'll do a follow-up video at some point on just kind of how um, how to do some configuration. I don't really know Manjaro that well, so th this is one of the reasons why I'm kind of like you know struggling with the screen resolution and different stuff like that. But I, I don't want to poke around and waste you guys' time. So uh, you know, something like you know, if, if you if you did a, if you looked at a Manjaro video on like DistroTube or something like that, they'll, he'll he'll kind of walk you through how to do the install. Uh, but I'm kind of just showing you how to use the VM and get the VM set up and the fact that you can now have a workstation uh, that you can work from. So um, I think that's kind of it for me. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, subscribe if you like it. Take it easy.